Hello, my name is Jess Whitaker, and the title of my project is ISG-15 and HIFs in the Hypoxic Response of Cancer. An overview to what I'll be covering is I will cover some background on ISG-15, its interplay with hypoxia, its expression in cancer and normal tissue, as well as its interplay with chemotherapy drugs. So for some background, ISG-15 stands for Interferon Stimulated Gene 15, it was first detected after interferon treatment in mouse LRH assay cells in 1979, and it was identified as a ubiquitin cross-reactive protein with its N and C termini only sharing 29 and 30% homology to ubiquitin respectively. You can see on your right that the ISG elation system functions similarly to the ubiquitin proteasome degradation system with three enzymes, an activating enzyme, a conjugating enzyme, and a ligase. ISG elation has been implicated as a negative regulator of HIF-1 signaling. You can see on the left that as the amount of ISG-15 is increased, the levels of HIF-1 decrease. Similarly, the reporter assay on the right shows decreased reporter activity in the presence of ISG-15. This RNA sequencing data in glioblastoma cells shows that ISG-15 expression is downregulated in response to hypoxia. 4-EHP has been identified as an alternative translation initiation factor in hypoxia. Thus, ISG elation has been shown to enhance the cap binding ability of 4-EHP, suggesting it promotes protein synthesis in hypoxia. These figures were taken from the GENT2 browser, which stands for Gene Expression in Normal and Tumor Tissue. In the figure on the left, you can see that red is representative of cancer samples, and blue is representative of normal samples, with the first two bars in the box plot indicating all cancer and all normal tissue. So you can see that the general trend is that ISG15 gene expression is upregulated in cancer compared to adjacent normal tissue. The figure on the right depicts a stage-wise expression data for colon cancer. You can see the biggest jump in gene expression is experienced between stages 0 and stage 1, indicating that ISG15 is likely important in the initiation of the cancer, but less important in the proliferation and metastasis of the cancer. Panels B and C show tumor grade and histology respectively. As tumor grade increases, the cells are poorly differentiated. Thus, the increase in gene expression as tumor grade increases and as cells are indicated as poorly differentiated is correlating. These findings suggest a pro-tumor function of ISG15 gene expression. A study conducted in 2012 found that silencing RNA knockdown of ISG15 15 expression in breast cancer cells resulted in flattened spread morphology as well as the formation of actin stress fibers and extensive actin polymerization. Whereas breast cancer cells treated with control silencing RNA retained their original shape and continued growing in multiple layers, indicating they were transformed tumor cells. This further suggests a pro-tumor function of ISG15 expression. Whereas this study in liver cancer found that increased ISG15 expression also increases overall protein ubiquitination, which is typically indicating proteasome degradation. It also increases tumor suppressor protein levels, including P53 and P21, which then in turn increases hepatocellular carcinoma cell apoptosis. This suggests an anti-tumor function of ISG15. To wrap up, this study studying trametinib, which is a MEK inhibitor chemotherapeutic, found that ISG15 knockdown enhances the anti-cancer effect of the drug in colon cancer and increases expression of pro-apoptotic genes, therefore further supporting a pro-tumor function of ISG15. A summary of the presentation, ISG15 and mRNA protein expression are elevated in cancer, it is not known whether it serves an oncogenic or tumor suppressive function, and hypoxia and ISG elation are intertwined, but the extent of their relationship is unknown. I'd like to thank Dr. Jim Uniak and PhD student Galen Milanson for their continuous support throughout the duration of my project.